Hi there, and welcome to the weekly asylum and immigration reform update, where I share with you five recent stories of interest to asylum seekers and those who want to stay current on immigration news. This week, we're discussing Trump plans to double detention capacity and restart family detention nationwide. Mass deportations could raise prices by 9.1% and harm the U.S. economy. Trump will expand migration control across Latin America using economic pressure. Miller, Homan, and Noam will lead aggressive immigration enforcement efforts. Biden is urged to protect immigrants before Trump's deportation plans begin. I'm Brian Manning, and I used to be an asylum officer with the government, but now, as an asylum lawyer, well, I help immigrants all over the country to secure their future in America through asylum. It's my pleasure to bring you asylum and immigration reform updates each week, right here on the Political Asylum Lawyers YouTube channel. Okay, let's get to the news. First up, the Trump administration is exploring plans to significantly expand immigrant detention capacity, including reviving family detention, as part of a promised mass deportation initiative, according to sources familiar with the transition planning. The strategy aims to double immigration and customs enforcement detention beds from the current 41,000, focusing on short-term holding facilities across major metropolitan areas with large immigrant populations. Officials are evaluating previously closed facilities, county jails, and potential new sites, particularly in areas areas like Denver, Los Angeles, Miami, Chicago, and Northeast Urban Centers. Private prison companies Geo Group and Core Civic, whose stock prices have surged since Trump's election, are positioning themselves for expansion, with Geo Group's leadership noting they were built for this moment. Immigration advocates have criticized the planned revival of family detention, which the Biden administration had terminated in 2021. And next up, for update number two. Trump's promised mass deportation program could trigger significant economic disruptions, with economists projecting prices could surge up to 9.1% by 2028 under a maximum deportation scenario. The impact would be particularly severe in sectors heavily reliant on immigrant labor, such as construction, where one in four workers is foreign-born, and healthcare, especially home health services. Union leaders warn that losing workers with temporary protected status would devastate the care economy, particularly in states like California, where immigrants comprise nearly 50% of in-home caregivers. While the Trump campaign argues deportations could boost American wages, research on previous enforcement initiatives found such actions often led to lower wages and employment for native-born workers. The American Immigration Council estimates enforcement costs alone would reach $315 billion for the largest deportation program in U.S. history. All right, time for our third immigration update. Trump's Latin America policy will prioritize migration control beyond the traditional focus on Mexico and the Northern Triangle countries, according to former Ambassador Carlos Trujillo. The administration plans to expand enforcement strategies across South America to combat what they view as overwhelming migratory flows. Potential measures include economic penalties, blockades, and diplomacy, with multiple nations involved in migration routes. While Trump may continue his tough stances on Cuba and Venezuela, his primary focus will be curbing migration rather than regional democratization efforts. The administration is expected to end Biden-era programs like the CHNV parole system and may reinstate policies requiring asylum seekers to wait in Mexico, with plans to leverage tariff threats against countries that don't cooperate on migration control. And moving right along, update number four. President-elect Trump's immigration enforcement team is taking shape with the selection of Stephen Miller as Deputy Chief of Staff for Policy, Tom Homan as Border Czar, and Governor Christy Noem as Homeland Security Secretary. The trio is positioned to implement aggressive deportation policies, with Miller crafting strategy, Homan coordinating operations, and Noem executing enforcement through ICE and CBP. Miller's plans include mass detention camps, ending parole programs for migrants from several countries, and letting TPS protections expire for over 800,000 people. While ICE faces staffing shortages and immigration courts remain backlogged, critics worry the administration will prioritize rapid deportations over due process, potentially affecting both undocumented immigrants and U.S. citizens caught in enforcement sweeps. And finally, our fifth immigration update for this week. With just over two months remaining, the Biden administration faces pressure to protect vulnerable immigrants before Trump's mass deportations begin, including 535,000 DACA recipients and 1.2 million work permit applicants. 
Critical priorities include processing the backlog of work authorizations, extending temporary protected status for over 650,000 people from 10 countries set to expire in early 2025, and finalizing the H-1B modernization rule. Immigration advocates urge Biden to release detained individuals who pose no public safety risk, expand the domestic visa renewal program, and rescind remaining Trump-era asylum restrictions. These actions could provide crucial protections before Trump implements promised enforcement measures targeting undocumented immigrants, regardless of their community ties or lack of criminal records. And that wraps up this week's immigration news. If you want to win asylum in the United States, then you should call my office today. We help people all over the country, so it doesn't matter where you are. Call us now to schedule an asylum strategy session so that we can help you to secure your future in America through asylum. Again, I'm Brian Manning, and it's an honor to serve you in your immigration journey.